Welcome back to Throwback Thursdays for another retro review here at the KOE Nation. I am your king of extreme, Lord Phil, KOE. Ah, uh, yes. Here to give you another marvelous retro review from my time over at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast, but I thought it would be the perfect time for me to bring that over here to you at the KOE Nation with just a little added Phil KOE flair. So without further ado, folks, let's get to the show and enjoy this retro review. For our premium spirits review of Dubliner Irish Whiskey, I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, non-coppa friendly, Tony fucking G, like, share, subscribe. This is it. Oh, I'm so excited for this. The Dubliner. I uh, I have been looking forward to this for a long time, probably almost a couple of years. I've I came across this, I don't know where online, and I thought, I'm a fan of Irish whiskey. You are? Uh, the Dubliner is the name of a chain of bars that I really have liked, the ones that I've gone into. Nice one in Red Light District, and Power and Light, excuse me, in Kansas City. I was about to say, Yeah, not quite the same thing. But the name the Dubliner on a bottle of Irish whiskey, now that's just something I got to try. So it well, took almost a couple of years to find, but we found it at Specs in Houston, Texas. And here it is. This retails for about $25 a bottle. So this price wise is not a top shelf Irish whiskey. My expectations are mildly low let's put it that now, way. now in terms of irish whiskeys it's the aging in fine old bourbon casts as traditional irish whiskeys you know look it up <laughs> not not to be a uh, facetious but no a lot of good uh cross casking in spirits can make a lot of interesting results but no i just couldn't help myself on that well one. But i would it, say that actually, wasn't the only thing you noticed on the back you uh Enjoy yeah, the, the Dubliner Irish Irish whiskey is fueled <laughs> in the spirit of home. No, I'm showing you people okay. at home. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Right there. Fueled. Yes. Fueled. There it is. Um. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's aluminum, not aluminium. It's methane, not methane, and Metric system, no. Uh, <laughs> Tony, I'll let you give this one an over. Oh, you guy. This is, yeah, but regardless, this is one of those I just had such a uh, fascination with. I'm so excited because it's such an Irish name. The bottle is actually aesthetically pleasing. The color is, as you can tell, very light. So, I actually expect this to be fairly harsh on the palate, but have a good flavor. We will find out. Now, when I see this bottle, the first thing I think of, I'll let you be the master of your poor, sir. Um, the band, the Dubliners. Uh, when I went home on a Monday night, as drunk as drunk could be, I asked my wife and I called to her, Do you mind explain to me? I don't know. The song but it just makes me uh, think of the the seven drunken nights by the dubliners um hmm. subtle not nearly as harsh a nose as Sweet. i expected it just it smells like yeah when they typical say typical irish honestly when they Go say it's got it. sweet and honey <clears throat> i'm that's really all i'm catching It's just a slight, uh, just, I get the sweeteners. Hmm. Like a slight, almost oh, yeah. Canadian oh. hint. If you stay in there, ooh, yeah, boozy, boozy, boozy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I like that smell of a nice harshness of an Irish. I just love the way that 
corrodes the nose, if you will. Mm. I, yeah, it opens It's a up, bit of a fetish. It opens up your sinuses oh, really yeah. well. Well, this has been a couple of years waiting, but regardless of how it is, cheers. Hmm. Oh, not bad. Oh, a little burn at the end. Oh, a lot smoother than I thought it would be. Oh, yeah. Wow. Much, much smoother. For a bourbon barrel aging, way smoother. The finish is a slight burn and it expands a little bit, if that makes any sense. Uh, but no, it uh, it's its initial flavor actually very light, as the color would almost indicate a, a good foreshadowing, if you will. But hmm. a sweet first note, the swallow taste, very mellow, and the finish. Yeah, the finish just expands a little bit. You get a bit of a floral note at the end, maybe an oak hint of oak it's strange when it's on your tongue like there <clears throat> should be a burn there yeah there should and but it's, it's not. not it's not there it's missing i and i honestly expected in a way this. that's actually appreciated yeah i expected this to be a lot so harsher than it is i'm pleasantly surprised the dubliner irish whiskey is fueled <laughs> by the spirit of home a rich history and heritage it's warmth and welcome Blended from a selection of malts and grain whiskeys, we raise a glass to the city of Dublin. And so, Tony, this absolutely deserves a, a stogie taste because, with a name like that, how could you not? Mm. Because I do rate my Irishes I'll be honest, with and without a stogie. Taste. I'm trying to find something else other than the honey and the cask. And I'm really having a hard time. No, that's really about all you get. Uh, yeah, that hot, that sweetness, honey. Finish and the, the bourbon cat, cask. The cask, yeah, the, the bourbon cask specifically is what you get on that aftertaste. It really expands as it slowly goes down your throat. And I, I actually like it. I, and unfortunately, <laughs> me here in the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast, I get to experience secondhand smoke, stoky taste. So. He does. <laughs> a lot. Well, you would like it with. I'm cool. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I think it enhances the sweetness, to be completely honest. I think oh. It's a nice pairing. Um, how much did that cigar cost? Let's not get into that. Okay. Bill. That's that's why. Um, <laughs> so, hmm. in terms of Irish whiskey. I spend my money on the high-end spirits, not like, the high-end stuff. Like Dubliner. Maybe not this one specifically. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this, this is a, not bad. This is a seven fifty uh, twenty four ninety nine retail. Is pretty much across the board what I've seen online, and it was I believe twenty four ninety nine in specs. But I actually just noticed this batch number 001. Ooh, first batch may have found something special here, wow. folks. I was about uh, to say, not bad. Yeah, because this is good. 40% alcohol, uh, it's it's light, it's, I don't want to say crisp, but it's very, very mellow for this what be, I was expecting. This would be great on the rocks and any yes. whiskey mix. I, I think this would be a fantastic one to pour over a big glass of rocks. Uh, what do you think about putting it in a cocktail? I, I, I know think, you're not a fan of cocktail. I'm not, I'm not but if you were going to mix uh, an Irish whiskey, this would go great with a ginger ale. This would go fantastic with a, a Seagram specifically. I think ale. this would shine as an Irish coffee. <laughs> that would be good. Because I'm going to have to try it does, that. Because when it's on your tongue, hmm. Hmm. there's no burn there. And it only opens up when you open your mouth. You know what? Actually, I, I think we might have to do a second tasting with a coffee and with a ginger ale just because I think this is actually a lot more diverse than I expected. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, if this is a uh, something that's uh, featured in a bar, you could see why yes. it would do well with cocktails, with coffees, Absolutely. with Absolutely. it has to do that. Yeah, so. I, I think that's that's a diverse one. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by that. 
it unfortunately it's not uh, available here in Nebraska where I, I've looked several places and have not seen it anywhere. Yeah, you're going to have to order it. Yeah, you're going to have to find it somewhere else. But now that you know that it's worth ordering, you might actually do that. I, yeah, I would definitely pick but another boy, bottle. Boy, do you think you'll, pro- you'll get batch number one, though? Probably that's not. A tough, that's a toughie. You know, Tony, maybe someday in the distant future in a galaxy far, far away, we'll have to do another trip to Specs Attack. Watch for that. But, Tony, here's going to be a really tough one. And you're at first not going to agree with my scores. But just hear me out. Okay. Irish whiskey. What do you give this, sir? I am going to give this actually three point seven five. <clears throat> Honestly, I, I really expect to give this more like a three. But it's so mellow that you could do so much with it. It's good neat. It's good, it'd be good on the rocks, be good as a mix. I mean, really, that's just in a good all around. Yeah, three point seven five. As an Irish, I'm going to give it three and a half because uh, you know it's. I've had way worse. Not Irish as full flavored as people kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. expect from Irish whiskeys. Yep. Fine whiskey though. Um, this is where things are going to get kind of screwy. Brown okay. spirits. Uh, three point two five. Four stars. Wow. Really? I can just by just the taste alone wow. can tell this would make an excellent cocktail whiskey. Um, I might end up trying to find a bottle of this uh, just for when I want to make Irish coffees, when I want to make any kind of cocktail that involves a whiskey. Dubliner would be a great go-to. Yeah. Uh, I got some great scotches, some great whiskeys at home. Like, uh, remember that farm stock rye? Great whiskey. I don't think that'd be good for cocktails. Maybe I'm wrong. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. This, it's this it's would. a great standalone. This is a good cocktail whiskey. And that's why for brown spirits, mm. it I'm giving it such a high rating. You get a little bit more harsh if you don't give it the flick of water before you pour it in. I tried it. Mm-hmm. I snort a bit neat. Obviously, it's just a touch harsher, but barely. You get a bit. You get a bit more of the floral taste with uh, no splash. Now, to you folks over in Ireland, uh, us Yanks call just a little tiny bit of a uh, taste of alcohol. We call that a snort. So, in case you're wondering, um, and no, we don't really consider calling us a Yanks. So <laughs> we, we don't care. So, all that being said, folks, if you're looking for a whiskey that's good for making cocktails, I'd give Dubliner a try here, folks. Indeed. All that being said, I am your King of Extreme, the master of sartorial resplendency, and I'm also the most modest guy in the room, Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner. The, the far less modest, Tony fucking G. Thank you for joining us. Get you some dubbing.